Hi everyone, I'm Devin James, the co-executive director of the Web3 Working Group. And welcome back for another episode of What Kind of Internet Do You Want? Today, we're diving a bit deeper into using Arweave by looking at how we set up and use two wallets, AR Connect, a popular Chrome browser extension, and the Keystone, a hardware wallet that recently added support for Arweave. Before we get started, just a reminder to hit the like button if you appreciate the content we're producing and share it with your friends if they wanna understand Web3 and how these emergent new technologies work. Now let's get into it. Arweave, as we've covered in recent videos, which we'll link right here, is a protocol for permanent storage of information. This, of course, means that in order to upload the information to the network, you've got to pay a fee. But in Arweave's case, rather than an ongoing service fee, like Amazon Web Services, it's a one-time payment. Their innovative approach ensures that there is a financial incentive for Blockweave miners to store that data for at least 200 years, which they discovered functionally means forever due to the rate that storage costs diminish over time. But of course it means you need to be able to store and send Arweave tokens to the various apps you interact with. I did so in our last episode in which we uploaded files using Acord, AR Drive, and Bundler. So today I'm gonna to be focusing on some of the non-custodial wallets you can use with Arweave. Amy talked about custodial and non-custodial wallets in another video, which will be linked right here if you want a refresher. But to sum up the difference between them, it comes down to who controls the keys. On the exchanges that you need to use in order to buy Arweave tokens like Bittrex and Crypto.com, the company running the exchange controls the wallets, which means if they break bad or get hacked or run into serious financial difficulties, you could lose access to your tokens. Sometimes you might even be denied access to your tokens just because of routine scheduled maintenance like is the case right now while I record this demo with the Arweave wallet on Bittrex.com. As the saying goes, not your keys, not your crypto. However, with non-custodial wallets, the user remains in exclusive control of their keys. This means they don't depend on a service staying online to have access to their tokens, but it also means they have full responsibility for protecting those keys, which can sometimes be hard, or at least hard to understand. So today we're looking at two non-custodial solutions for storing and using your AR tokens. Let's go ahead and get started with AR Connect. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and install the AR Connect wallet on my browser. I'm using the Chrome Web Store, but I am using Brave because it works with uh, Chrome extensions and it isn't Chrome. So we'll go ahead and search the extensions for AR Connect. And I actually want to use the beta because I know that it happens to work with the uh, Keystone. So I'll go ahead and click Add uh, Extension. Do, 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 do. And it's added to Brave. Go ahead and pin it so that it stays there. And get me started. Starting with a brand new wallet. It's going to walk me a little bit through uh, Arweave and what the Permaweb is. And of course, AR Connect, a crypto wallet extension allowing you to interact with Permaweb apps securely. So let's go ahead and create a password. Nice secure one. Oh, it considers it okay. Grab my seed phrase, back that up. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll go ahead and stick with my uh, system UI theme and wallet is set up. Excellent, so now I can access it just by coming up here to my browser extensions, need to Drop in my password and unlock it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and fund this wallet. I'll pop it open and click on the receive button and that's going to show me a QR code. So I'm gonna open my crypto.com wallet where I've got a little bit of AR. Scan the QR code. I can name that. AR 
connect demo wallet. I do, in fact, trust this. So I've got that uh, wallet address in there. I'll go ahead and click withdraw. Uh, that's way too much. Let's just do one AR. Okay, and we've got that done. Okay, so not going to be showing you a demo on how crypto.com works because it shows way too much secure stuff, but that's not what this is about. That's a custodial wallet. Um, but we should see our transactions show up pretty soon. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the Block Explorer, and we can just go ahead and watch this address until uh, transaction shows up. Okay, and there we go. We have one transaction. Still showing as pending because it only has uh, 15 confirmations. I think it's, if I remember right, it's 60 uh, is the standard to consider something actually confirmed. Um, and all we've, but there we go. So we've got our first deposit. Um, and the other thing I wanna show you before moving on to the Keystone is how to export this wallet file so that I can use it with something like Bundler, which I uh, showed in last week's demo. Literally, we just uh, go straight into the, the um, AR Connect, click on the gear here to bring up the settings for it, click on Wallets, where you might have multiple wallets listed, select the one that you want, and click Export Key File. It's gonna ask for your password again, and I can save that key file. So that way I can use that with local applications running on my computer and it has access to the private keys. Okay, cool. So next we're going to uh, set up the Keystone hardware wallet to use it with my AR Connect account. So I've already done some amount of setting this up. Uh, it takes you through a, a relatively laborious process, all for the sake of security. Um, where it sets up a, a password, and I want to encourage you to use a secure password. Um, and then it gives you your, your um, uh, recovery words. Your, at, it uses a 24-word um, mnemonic, uh, and I saved that all, all to the side. It's a little bit laborious to interact with all that on the hardware device itself, so I want to encourage you to uh, make sure you set up a uh, fingerprint unlock as well. Uh, it makes it a lot easier, and it's still secure because I'm the only one with my uh, finger. Okay. Uh, and you can access that by going to settings um, and then fingerprint settings and uh, adding a, uh, a new fingerprint to the uh, device. So what we're going to do for now is connect software wallet and choose the AR Connect. And it wants me to scan the QR code via my software wallet. So I come over here and da, da, da. oh i know sorry add a new wallet connect keystone so it's loading a scanner and it created a connection between the two and now i've got my Keystone accessible via my AR Connect, which is pretty awesome because it means if I, let's, uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and send some of the AR tokens that I just received from crypto.com into the wallet uh, that is stored entirely in my AR Connect over to my Keystone wallet. So go ahead and click send. Let's make it 0.5. Click scan address, and unlock my keystone, pull up an address, okay, and send it.
Awesome. Nice and easy. So that will be received on my keystone in a few moments. And then what I can do is I can show you how to uh, use the AR Connect wallet with keys that are stored on your keystone, which is especially cool and kind of what the, the chief benefit of this kind of a device is. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to the Keystone wallet that we already connected. We're going to click here to start a new transaction. And I'm actually going to send this back to my Crypto.com wallet, which I already have an address. Paste that in there. Uh, not sending a whole one, let's say 0.1 and send. So now it's asking me basically because the keys are kept entirely on the keystone, which doesn't have any connection to the internet, the computer is doing all the internet type stuff and the hardware wallet is doing all the key related stuff like signing the transaction. So I gotta wake up the keystone again, give it my fingerprint unlock, click on this little button down here, which brings up its camera point that at the screen, which it reads the transaction, gives me the data uh, from the transaction, who it's from, who it's to, the amount, the fee, etc, etc, etc. If I'm happy with all that, I click sign. I have to verify my fingerprint again. Okay, and come down here, hit next, and my Computer camera turns on again, and now it needs to read the signature from the keystone, and it sends the signed transaction off into the internet. Pretty fantastic. So it means you can keep your, your keys entirely on a device that has no internet access, and you can still have really convenient access to the services you need to use through a browser extension, which is a pretty, pretty great combo. There you have it. Now you have some understanding of how to keep your tokens safe and under your personal control so you can always use them when you need. You can find me on Twitter at Devin R. James, and you can find Web3 Working Group on all socials at Web3WG. In our next video, I'm going to show two more apps for publishing content to Arweave, one for podcasters and the other for YouTubers. So if you want your show's content on the PermaWeb, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and share it with some friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.